Yeah, I just called the. Uh, I just called my uh, agent. Told them that uh, I did the first uh, stop of the day today. Uh, I'm in a small, kind of, you know, a rural, tiny, teeny town. And they dropped. Uh, I and they picked up. Uh, all fields are up. They picked up three crates and again it took six straps. I had to remove six straps and then uh, thread them back through, you know. Uh, this time maybe I'm getting better or maybe the guy is, was faster uh, as a driver. Like uh, he had a small forklift, you know, really maneuverable. But it took about 45 minutes. So, so far I did uh, Keene, Ontario, uh, Cobden, Ontario, L'Originale, Ontario, and this is the first one in Quebec, uh, Howick, Quebec. So now I'm heading Cowansville. That's about uh, 80 miles from here, 75 miles, 124 kilometers. And then I have Victoriaville, Nicolette, and the last one is uh, St. Henry. Oh boy. Well, at least the uh, good news is that oh, my next drop is going to be four crates. Cool. Oh, and the good news is that uh, the tier three is gone now. So, because before I had some uh, big crates, you know, sticking, sticking out right above my uh, cab. Uh, so now it's all two crates, only two levels. So, it should be good for fuel economy. So. Time who to uh, start rolling, and I didn't eat anything. Just had coffee, and I bought a new windshield wiper, and it doesn't want to lock. So I see over there. So I had to uh, use some creative engineering over there with some piece of wire. I really should replace that. It's all bent, and I cannot uh, find the correct, you know, shape to bend it in. You see it's even that uh, part sticks out at uh, the the end of the of the arm yeah it's not good I'm gonna replace it you know next time because I need it uh, whether I sell the truck or not because it's really important when that your windshield wipers work otherwise you cannot see anything right this is some uh, kind of small you know French way back down don't know the name don't speak the language. All signs are in French. Feels like a different planet.
why in the rest of the world the lights are around? Wait a second. Oh, these ones are around. Okay. So they probably did have some. Some of them remained somewhere, somewhere in the top secret warehouse. But I know for sure that. stopping you know we really work you know like no one else for me 
<laughs> and I said, where's the, where's the dealer? Like, where's the unloading place? Where's the forklift? And he said something about customs, you know, like for the... So basically, it's his uh, house. And for some reason he puts that on, on documents. He gave me uh, the address and my GPS was able to find it. So it's just uh, three kilometers away, but you know, still it's like a wrong, a wrong side of this small town. And I'm burning diesel here, right? So you know, these guys just. They had the lunch break, almost an hour, and, but now at least I'm uh, off the first page of my deliveries. So Pound, Wisconsin pickup, Keene, Ontario, Coblin, Ontario, L'Originale, Ontario, Howick, Quebec, Cowansville, Quebec. So this is for Quebec. This is my second in Quebec, so the next one is Victoriaville, Quebec, and those guys there. I think they have a whole bunch of boxes. Stop uh, three. Oh, no, only five. Wait a second. So I only have three stops left. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I did fine. Okay, so I have three stops left. All right, that's cool. Why? Because uh, a guy just called me and offered me a load. And that's one thing I like, you know, uh, agents can see your truck when they know where you're going. You know, when they search for trucks. 13, 14, wait a second. 13, 14... Okay, five, yeah, all right. So when they uh, search for trucks, they can see uh, they can see you, depending on the radius. Uh, but I find that a lot of agents, they kind of, uh, they don't understand the, the logistics involved. And they just look for, I asked once, I, I asked one agent, I said, what's the radius that you choose, you know, when you look for loads? And she said, uh, 75 miles. No, if I'm really desperate, I'll put in a hundred. I said, what? <laughs> no wonder we have no loads, you know, because, you know, I'm prepared to travel, I don't know, two, three hundred miles, you know, if it's a good load. These guys are looking because, you know, they need it like this, right? They don't want to wait a day for... Uh... Okay, I'm just trying to find this stupid... Where am I here? I have no idea. I'm looking at the map of Quebec. Saint Maria, what is this? This is uh, this is Cowansville, Cowansville, Quebec, somewhere. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of small towns here. It's a very populated area. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, Collinsville. Oh, I found it. So I'm just southeast of uh, of Montreal. Hmm. I was driving what it seemed like forever, and I'm still here. Oh, I see Victoriaville. Okay. So yeah, Victoriaville is just north of a bigger town called Drummondville. Drummondville. Alright, so but it's straight north. And my GPS says it's 150 kilometers, so. And now it's already 10 to 2. So I better get moving. Otherwise, by the time I get there, it'll be like the story yesterday. When I barely made it, so. I think I'm ready. Oh, all I need to do is mark my uh, electronic log on the computer that I'm leaving. Now this is uh, Cowansville. This was uh, stop four. So I only, I only have three stops left. So I'm heading now to Victoriaville, Quebec. And uh, I had two, no, actually three interesting uh, telephone conversations today. One was with a, a Freightliner dealer. Uh, I left a message yesterday just, you know, asking about axles on a new Coronado. And this guy from a Freightliner uh, dealership near my home uh, called me back and he said an interesting thing. I didn't realize that. He said that uh, for every 25 trucks they sell, you know, aerodynamic style. They only sell one classic truck. And I said, uh, by classic you mean uh, Coronado? And he said, yeah. So, he, so they sell 25 Cascadias and only one Coronado. And I asked him, what does he think about uh, resale value? And he says, uh, so because of this, so because very few people buy, uh, so wait a second, I came from the opposite direction, why right? this thing is, is sending me this way, why? Oh, okay, there's a bigger road there going north, okay, I'll wait. Because, you know, this this is just a car GPS, right? So I have to be careful. Because I tried the uh, truck-specific GPSs. And they have, uh, even though they send you on a truck-specific route, but I had too many problems with them. Uh, they don't uh, route you correctly. Anyways, so this uh, Freightliner dealer says, uh, I say, why is the price uh, higher on uh, classic trucks when you resell them, like uh, used ones? And he says it's because of this, because a uh, few people buy them nowadays, and so th there's a limited amount of these trucks on the market, you know? And he, he gave me an example, he said just uh, recently he had a... Uh, I uh, used the uh, K Whopper, KW900 uh, and he found that this was the only truck like for the entire uh, Toronto area and uh, you know the, the entire central Ontario so of course he put like 50,000 bucks even though the truck was uh, you know old and that's why so he and he said that uh, if you drive slow you know, maybe like like I drive slow, right? Most of the time I drive even under 60 miles per hour. And he said, uh, he said maybe it might not be such a bad idea, you know, to buy a kind of a classic truck. But then, of course, you might be losing, you know, like one mile per gallon. Still, compared to the Cascadia. And the other thing, so I asked him to do a spec of a Columbia, even, I mean Cascadia, even though I don't like them, but let's see what the price will be with the D16. And then uh, the Mac guy called me. The one that uh, I asked him to spec a tight 
$156,000. I said, you're crazy. That's too much. And he said, uh, why don't you get that uh, Mac that you drove? He said, uh, uh, I sold one to a guy at Landstar, a Landstar driver. I said, wait a second, I'm from Landstar. He says, no, this was another guy. And he bought the same kind of Mac with 1750 torque, uh, but with the lift axle, like heavy axles, uh, 14 six in the front, 46 in the rear, 18 speed, uh, 505 horsepower engine. But he put the lift axle on it and he pulls a heavy step deck. And he said uh, the truck was pulling okay. Actually, it was pulling great. Oh boy. Well, the sign says uh, British Columbia Railway. But anyway, so there was, those were uh, two interesting conversations, right? And this man guy, uh, basically I had my doubts, you know, because the truck I have now has, uh, you know, 1850 torque. So, uh, but the thing is that my engine develops all the torque at uh, 1200 RPM. You know, this is an old style engine, right? Now these new Max, uh, they use uh, Volvo engines. And of course, they are, I'm pretty sure that it, it a 13 liter and it's a 13 liter engine. It will be much better on fuel. And I saw these Mack trucks, the same one I, I test drove. I saw them, uh, you know, pulling multi-axle tankers and multi-axle uh, uh, trailers like various kinds of trailers on on in Ontario and Quebec here uh, and I asked the salesperson about this and he said uh, uh, they don't have a uh, one particular like RPM where the um, where the torque you know maxes out and then starts dropping uh, they have a flat kind of almost a flat curve uh, anywhere between 11 and 1400 you know, so that's why these uh, engines, even though they have only 1750 torque, uh, but I'm, I suspect they're probably uh, actually the same as 1850 in my truck because my engine develops that torque later, you know. And uh, I was really impressed that uh, he told me about this Landstar guy. I'm gonna ask him for a phone number and, and talk to him. Uh, because he's using a Mac for some heavy haul and he's he's fine with it and he said that he's getting good fuel mileage you know so it might be something to, uh, to to look into and they have these trucks in stock so you know if I can sell mine and sell my trailer I don't have to wait three months till the factory makes an extra truck like that they already have it you know so oh wow the train is uh, so ende as they say in uh, German Yeah. Great liner is 
uh, situation. Uh, I have to turn around from my last stop, right? And there was no, uh, there was no uh, place to turn around there. And people fly by at 90 kilometers an hour, so the GPS sent me this way. So if I turn right at the stop sign, and you see it's French uh, array or whatever you pronounce it, I go back to the place where I'm supposed to go, but the turn is too sharp. There's a sign and there's a ditch. So you see my uh, tracks are on the left. I, I uh, try to stay as far to the left as possible and then make the right turn, but it's still, it's. I didn't even try it. I saw right away that it was too, uh, uh, you know, too sharp. So what I'm doing now, I backed and uh, I, I do the opposite thing. I go all the way to the right, my flashes are on, my beacon is on, because I see here there's much more room to the left, right? Well, I mean, not the right, but <laughs> there's more room this way. So this is piece of cake, so I go like this. Check out the, the ditches.
GPS says it's only uh, 58 kilometers or less than you know, 40 miles. And I'll be crossing a big uh, highway on the way there. So I, I hope there's a, there's a truck stop there. So that's one thing, one good thing about Quebec, Quebec that uh, you know I like is uh, one of the few things that I like is that there's uh, quite a few truck stops. You know they all kind of semi-independent but there's always a good restaurant and the food here is amazing prices are expensive like I used to like I said before uh, I mean food is expensive but I guess you get what you pay for it these guys really know how to cook so what I meant by saying advance is that I'm gonna going towards my next stop kind of uh, get closer you know and just find a truck stop somewhere along the way so that in the morning I'm like 20 30 minutes away from the drop so that I can do it quickly because uh, I already booked the return load the guy called me so I'm picking up uh, tomorrow about two hours away from where I, my final drop is look at that guy 